Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now today we're going to tackle the Cordor gang from Necromunda, which are grim, grimy, dirty, they're everything that I love about 40k. You know, Necromunda, the proper underhive feel of that setting, condensed into one set of miniatures. They're absolutely bonkers, they're so much fun to paint. Now what I've got for you today is a technique that uses very few paints, really, uh, and on top of that is really easy to do. You're probably going to want to pick up a set of makeup brushes, which I will explain a little later on, and all of the paints will be listed in the description below. So, without any further mucking around, let's get started. Now to begin with, I've given this guy a primer spray of Leather Brown from the Army Painter. And any sort of mid-tone brown will work for this, but Leather Brown is going to give us, I think, one of the best results. Uh, there's a little bit of warmth to it, so when we shade this, we're going to get a pretty cool finish. As well, because it's a little bit brighter than some of the brown primers you'll find out there, uh, some of these colours are going to go over it very easily. And one of those we're going to start out with is Bugman's Glow to paint his skin. And we're going to start here because, honestly, we're probably going to make a bit of mess. You know, if I get some on his cowl, you know, this bit here, or on his sleeves, it doesn't matter. We're going to paint those another colour later. But Bugman's Glow with just a little bit of water in there. And we'll paint in all the skin areas. Uh, bits here like his leg. Don't worry too much if you don't get a perfect, you know, if you hit the rags or what have you, because again, we'll paint those later. So probably two coats of this. Let's see what we get. Now that doesn't take very long to do at all. What I've got now is I'm going to paint his clothing. And for this, I've got McCrag Blue. Now you might want to use something with a bit more saturation, something like Calidor Sky. You could even go to the fang if you fancied, but I'm just going to pick out some areas of his clothing in blue. Uh, there isn't really a right answer to how this looks. Uh, but if you get stuck for ideas, you can just check the box art and uh, see how they've gone and done that. You'll see this covers fairly well. Uh, in some areas you might skip with just one coat, but don't let anybody know I told you that. If you do get the primer still showing through though, you will get a bit of a finish overall if you come back and give it that second coat. Now the classic Cordor colours used to be just straight red and blue, uh, but the new version has this sort of reddish leather, it's quite dark, and I think it really suits the new style of miniatures. So for that I'm going to use Doom Bull Brown. Uh, if you wanted to, you could use something like Corn Red or even Mephiston Red if you wanted a really bright red finish that kind of classic look, uh, but I'm going to stick to similar to the box. And I'm just going to pick a couple of areas again, like the blue, we can be quite random with this. Uh, so let's paint in his cowl, face mask, and yeah, I'll just pick another couple of areas and you'll see this Doomball Brown being a layer paint, you might get some translucency. Uh, which shows the lighter primer underneath. So if you need to, of course, come back, give it a second coat, because that's up to you. I've got some leather brown here from the Army Painter, uh, because I think if you're going to use the primer, it pays to have a pot of the, uh, the paint just to fix up any little mistakes you've made along the way. So I'm just going to touch in a couple of little whoops moments on the you know, some of the clothing that I want to stay this brown, and then we're going to turn to a dry brush. Now for this I've got Tyrant Skull, and you see I've got a fair chunk of that mashed into my brush there. What I'm going to do is work this into a makeup brush. Um, I say this quite often, but the softer bristles really make it hard for you to apply too much pressure while you're working with this stuff. You'll see I'm leaving almost nothing behind on the paper. I really want to just dust this. So up close, we'll test along the edge of his base. You'll see it takes a few passes, but we get that nice line. What I'm going to do is dry brush all of them. So the light brown, the blue, everything. Concentrating towards the edges. So let's come down on him here to get the top of that cowl. We'll go along here to pick up that leather and so forth. Now dry brushing is a technique I know some of you turn your noses up at, 
But I guarantee you, if you practice and uh, you know you play around with the results that you can get from it, you will find a use for this. The trick is, though, that at this stage, it will look terrible. <laughs> no matter how well it goes on, it's not going to look quite right until a later stage. So you have to keep the faith until that point. Now I might put... You know, I might touch up the uh, color on his face here because I don't want him to have a bright nose. But for getting some color and shading on the brown, uh, this works perfectly. So I'm going to pass around this a couple of times. See that, uh, that blue there? That's going to be great when we shade this. So we'll come back and have a look what the finished product is when he's dry brushed. Now you might say that since Tyrant's skull is yellow, why are we using it over blue? The short answer is because once we've shaded it, what it's going to look like instead is fading towards the edge of any of those colors. So that's quite ideal. Don't worry too much about, you know, his knuckles and what have you, because we're going to highlight his skin later anyway. But we'll move on now to a couple of other colors. And I've got here Dryad Bark. And we're just going to quickly paint in a couple of areas of darker leather. So his shoes and... This little strap he's got holding his goofy mask on. Now, when it comes to the metallics on this fella, we're going to apply it in two ways. I've got one of my cheap brushes from the stationary aisle here, uh, although an old medium base brush will do this job pretty well. And I'm going to use this to just stipple some lead belcher onto the metalwork of his weapon. Uh, you can be quite rough with this, you know, don't worry if it doesn't cover properly. And of course, since we haven't painted the uh, straps and what have you yet, that's fine. And when it comes to, for example, this bit on his uh, cowl here, this thingamajigger, I'm going to swap on down to a medium layer brush and paint that on that way instead. But for anything where we want a kind of grungy metal finish with some of the brown showing through underneath, just jam it on fairly haphazardly with a raggedy old brush and you'll get a finish, something like that. Now that's going to look properly grungy. I've got now here, this is Zandri dust, and I'm going to use this to paint in the rope around his neck and any bone details that he's sort of clutching onto. So this little thing here. Uh, now there are a few other details on, you know, some of the miniatures. And again, if you need to double check what's going to look good, you can just have a look at the box art. And then you can use Rakarth Flesh to paint in any straps, uh, any candles, anything here which looks like sort of ragged old cloth will generally benefit from this. Uh, now at this stage, it's really up to you whether or not you want to stick to one color for this, because of course, you know, there are a bunch of different really grimy sorts of beiges and browns here. But I think because we are trying to save time, stick to one color. You know, a, a nice narrow palette is not going to be too bad for how these guys look on the table. So now we're really just down to the last couple of details. I've got here some Avaland Sunset, and I'm going to quickly blast along a couple of these panels on the base, because uh, I forgot to do those earlier. Because <laughs> uh, nothing says Necromunda to me like hazard stripes. And now we can grab a little bit of black and we'll start painting in some stripes. Now the yellow did take me a couple of coats, uh, mostly because I wasn't patient enough with it. But here let's just draw a line across and we'll see what we get. If I need to, I can tidy this up with a little more Avalanche Sunset. Uh, and at the same time, I'm going to blacken his hair. Now I did need to come back and straighten out those stripes, but at this stage, any last minute sort of fixes you need to make, go nuts. You know, this is the last chance you're going to get before we go a little crazy with the Earthshade here. So to nobody's great surprise, we're going to grab Agrax Earthshade and apply this fairly generously over the whole miniature, making sure you are really jamming it into the recesses. And then, once you've doused the whole miniature in this, We'll give that about 30 minutes to dry. Now, after you've had the time to make a cup of tea, there's your job done. And I'm really happy with that. 
Uh, full disclosure, if I was going to paint this guy for my own gang, I would just call him here, varnish him up. That's a painted figure. He looks good. But of course, there's still plenty more that we can do to him. So what I've got here is a little bit of Cadian flesh tone. And these little dry brushes have actually acted as a bit of a guide here. What I'm going to do is just backs of his knuckles very carefully. Bleep, bleep, bleep. Come on, bleep. And I will paint in his chin. Now, if you have trouble reaching something that's, you know, behind a cowl or something, flip him upside down and you'll find it much easier to get in there. Like a so. Now a little bit of flayed one flesh just on some of the edges of the candle is going to look quite nice. So take your time here. If you want to highlight some of the uh, dripping wax, you can do that. And now at this stage, it's up to you whether you want to use Ushapti bone or I'm here using Morgast bone. Ushapti bone is slightly lighter, uh, but I like this sort of, well, for lack of a better term, grimdark finish that Morgast bone is going to give us just here. Now a final stage that looks really cool on these Cordor miniatures is to get yourself some Mornfang Brown and water it down till it kind of looks like a shade. You want it to be very, very thin here. Then what we're going to do is just pick a few areas, like say the back of the barrel of his gun here, and just paint a little line of this gunge in there. And just a few random spots where you want it to look as though you know, rust and grime has accumulated. So you don't have to go crazy with this. Uh, even on his armor plate, like this thing on his chest here, you can do a little bit of this just to give it a little bit more interest in its corners. Uh, you can be the judge of how much of this you like. I'd suggest you really want to water it down, you know, first time you do it, water it down more than you might think you should, because uh, it is easy to go overboard. But once you've got the hang of it, man, it looks cool. So once that's dried, you get a nice subtle grime in the recesses. And remember too, you can also apply that to his base in order that it sort of fits in with the miniature a little better. What I'm going to do now is hit him with a quick spray of varnish. Uh, for this, I am using the Vallejo matte varnish, but you can use uh, Purity Seal or what is it? Munitorum varnish now, if that's what you've got. Let's get a look at him once he's finished. Now with that varnish dried, he is complete. And I'm really pleased with that result. Looks proper dark and grimy. He's, oh, cordor to me through and through. But there's someone else I have to introduce you to, and that is this little fella here. Bomrat! Now, <laughs> one of the conditions of my lovely wife letting me use her cordor miniature was that I had to paint Bomrat for the channel. So Bomrat here, uh, cordor have access to Bomrats, little one-use markers that explode. They're, they're one-shot weapons, essentially. And having a little marker to remind you that you've got a bomb rat is pretty handy. So this fella, he's a little resin print off of my 3D printer. Uh, and the file was free. Someone very kindly made these bomb rats and uploaded them to Thingiverse. So I'm going to go through the painting on this quite quickly. We will start off with our little brush and lead belcher once again. I'm then going to use some Cadian flesh tone and paint in his tail. Now this little indent on his base here, uh, this is going to be a perfect spot for some stripes. I'm not going to be terribly careful with this. Um, so, you know, if it doesn't come out quite straight, whatever. Now while those layers dry, I'm going to apply a little Mephiston Red to this grenade <laughs> perched precariously on his back. And then of course, once all of your base coats are dried, on goes the Agrax Earthshade. And then we'll give that 30 minutes to dry. <laughs> Then we'll have Bomb Rat. And then once your Agrax Earthshade has dried, water down your Mornfang Brown, and we'll do that rust trick again. So into some of the recesses, and on some of the... Actually, let's go crazy here. Let's make this proper grimy. Now while that dries, if you want to do a job, you might as well do it properly. So I've got here some Kislev Flesh, and I'm just going to dip, 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 dip a few little lines along his tail. Uh, just to give a little bit of texture there. Blot the little back of his hands, and can we get into his ears there? I think we can. 
So now at last with Bob Rat varnished, uh, we can call both of them complete, and I'm really pleased with that result. Obviously we're not out to win Golden Demon, but I think as far as getting painted miniatures on the table as quickly as possible, nothing beats that quick pre-dry brush before you throw your shade on, and for things like clothing and rough material, what a winner. You know, it adds just a little bit of extra depth to the miniature without having to spend a painstaking amount of time highlighting anything. So as always, thank you very much to Exit 23 Games for the light and sound equipment, as well as all of the patrons who are keeping me ticking over in paint and glue, including producers Alan Nuttall, Kyrie Crawford, Connor, Trainboy, and Fred. Your support is invaluable. Any questions or anything, feel free to drop them in the old comment box below. My Twitter and Facebook are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time, and you all enjoy the rest of your day.